Hello, welcome. So in this video, we're going to look at the digestive system of invertebrate. These are animals without backbone. They don't have backbone. And here are some examples on my screen. Now, there are two main reasons why animals need food or nutrients. Number one is that they need the nutrients to build the different parts of their cells like the cell wall, the cell membrane, and different organelles. Number two is to maintain homeostasis. Example, the blood sugar level or sodium concentration in the cells. If animals don't eat sugar, their blood sugar can go down and which can affect the animals. They can even die. Now, we are going to look at different organisms from protists to uh, different invertebrate animals. And as we look at that, you're going to see that uh, the digestive system has evolved, evolution, okay, from very simple digestive systems to a more advanced digestive systems. Simple means it can only digest few things or few uh, types of food and advanced means it can digest different types of food many many different types so let's start with protist now protists are not animals they are eukaryotic organisms which means they have a nuclear membrane around their nucleus okay but they are not animals they are not plants they are not fungi okay but how do protists get their food? There are different types of ways that they get their food. So let's look at some of them. Number one is some protists are photosynthetic, which means they can make their own food. Example is euglena and diatoms. You can see here in euglena, they have chloroplast, which help them to get energy from the sun and use that energy in photosynthesis to make what carbohydrates number two some protists are holozoic this means they can eat other organisms uh, example is this amoeba you can see here there is a food particle and the amoeba is going around the food particle and it's going to uh, move the food particle into its cells and it will release enzymes which will digest the food inside the amoeba cell. Uh, we call that as intracellular digestion. Intra means in, cellular means cell. So they are digesting the food inside their cells. Another example is a paramecium. So this is paramecium and you can see it has some food particles going into the paramecium cell through the oral groove, which is like the mouth of the paramecium. After the food gets inside, enzymes are released and the food is digested. The waste product then moves outside through the anal pole. Uh, the next group of protists, uh, we call them saprobic, okay, which means they digest the food outside their cells and absorb the nutrients example is the slime mold okay this is a slime mold the yellow uh thin on the screen uh, the slime mold will release enzymes onto the food around it and the enzymes will digest the food and the slime mold will absorb it back we call this as extracellular digestion it extra means out and cellular means cell so it means what they digest the food outside their cells and absorb it in as absorb the nutrients into their cells uh, next is some pro some protists are parasitic this means they live inside other organisms and we have two examples plasmodium and trypanosome uh, plasmodium is found in mosquito they live inside the mosquito and when a mosquito bites you it releases this protest into your body they stay in your body and get their nutrients from your body 
okay they are parasitic uh, next is uh, misotrophic misotrophic uh, some uh, protists get food or nutrients in more than one ways and we call that misotrophic uh, example is euglena some types of euglena can make their own food and some of them can make their own food and also eat other organisms okay we call that as misotrophic okay our next group of organisms are porphyrins example sponges now this is a structure of a sponge and we can see it has one big opening which we call as osculum and the osculum will lead down to a big space we call as fungosil. And in the inner wall of the sponge, there are these cells, which we call as quanocytes. If you zoom into a quanocyte, you're going to see this structure. This is a structure of a quanocyte, okay, right here. Now, on the outside of the sponge, there are these small holes, which we call as ostium. We have one and ostia for more than one. So there are many ostia around it. And the cells which make up these ostia are called porocytes. Now, uh, sponges are called filter feeders because they pump water through their body and they catch the food which is in the water. So example, if you look at this video here, when you put some food color uh, around the sponge, the water and the color will move through the ostia into the spongocell and it is pumped out through the osculum. When the water is pumping out, the quanocytes are going to catch the food particles in the water. Example, we can see here the red dots are food colors, are food particles, and they will enter the quanocytes and enzymes are released to digest the food inside the quanocyte, okay, like that. So this is an example of what intracellular digestion. The food is digested inside the quanocyte. And when the food enters the quanocyte, uh, we call that phagocytosis. It means that they are swallowing the food. Now the quanocyte also have flagellum right here, which move and create water current, okay, which helps to move more water out and get more food. Okay, so let's look at our third group of uh, invertebrates, the cnidarians. Example of cnidarians are hydra and jellyfish. Now, this is a structure of a hydra. It has an incomplete digestive system. This means it has only one opening. There's one opening, which is both the mouth and the anus. And uh, food will enter through this opening. And after the food is digested, the waste product, the waste product will move out from this one hole. It is incomplete digestion or incomplete digestive system. Okay. Now, uh, when the food gets into the space, this space which we call as gastrovascular cavity, enzymes are released from the cells to digest the food. After that, the nutrients are absorbed into the cells. So this is an example of uh, extracellular digestion. Okay, The food is digested outside the cell. Another example is jellyfish. So this is the, the one opening right here, which is both the mouth and the anus, and food will go into the gastrovascular cavity right here, and it is digested, okay? And the waste product, again, will come out from this one hole. Uh, the next group of organisms we're going to talk about are platyhelminthes, or flatworms. And we look at two examples. Uh, we have planaria and tapeworm. Now, planarians also have incomplete digestive system. This means there is only one hole or one opening, which is both the mouth and the anus. So here is this opening where the food will enter and the waste will come out. It's incomplete digestive system. The one hole is connected to the body by the pharynx. 
okay and the pharynx will lead to the uh, gastrovascular tract which is just small spaces inside the planaria when food gets into the pharynx it is pushed into the gastrovascular cavity and the enzymes are released onto the food to digest after that it will absorb into the cells so this is what example of extracellular digestion okay extracellular digestion uh, another example of flatworm is tapeworm and tapeworm lives inside a host can be a human or another animal and they absorb the food from outside they release enzymes around the environment and will digest the food around it and absorb it okay so the next group of organisms we're going to look at are annelids uh, annelids are worms which have segments okay so segments example is earthworm and in earthworms we start to see a complete digestive system complete means it has two openings a mouth and an anus and food will enter through the mouth and the waste product will go out through the anus when the food goes into the digestive system enzymes are released to the onto the food and it is digested and absorbed into the cells so this is extracellular digestion now when the food gets into the mouth it is broken down into smaller pieces and then move on, uh, into the pharynx okay after that the pharynx will push the food to the esophagus and in the esophagus some enzymes are released onto the food to digest some of the proteins in the food after that this food will move to the crop and the crop will keep the food for a short time okay and also help to break down the food into smaller pieces after the crop is the gizzard, uh, which will help to also break down the food into even smaller pieces, okay, so that it, it is easy to digest. Next is the food will move into the intestine, where more enzymes are released onto the food and digest, uh, to digest the food and absorb into the cells, okay. After that, the waste products are released outside through the anus okay and these waste products by the way are very very uh, helpful for the soil makes the soil healthy and good uh, for plants okay so the next group of organisms we're going to look at mollusk An example of mollusks are the snail and bivalves okay so in mollusks we see a complete digestive system which means they have a mouth and an anus, two openings. So in the snail, here is the mouth, and around the mouth area are these structures, which we call as radula. And the radula will cut the food into smaller pieces so that they can easily go inside the stomach. So after the food is cut into small pieces, it's going to enter through uh, into the stomach and when it gets to the stomach enzymes are released to digest the food and the nutrients from the food are absorbed and the food will move into the intestines where it will digest even more and absorb even more nutrients and the waste product will go out through the anus uh, the next example is bivalve okay and this is uh, a bivalve uh, which is moving with its foot okay it moves with its foot just like that now bivalves are also filter feeders which means they pump water through their body and catch the food inside the water now the water is going to enter through the incurrent siphon okay and then enter the body and then move around and come out through the excurrent siphon when the water is moving, uh, the gills, these gills, which are similar to the gills in a fish, will absorb the oxygen in the water. And when the water is moving to this area, there is a small mouth which will help to 
catch some of the food in the water. The food will then enter the stomach and then it will be digested and some of the nutrients in the food will be absorbed and the food will move to the intestines where it's also uh, digested and absorbed and finally the waste product will go out through the anus okay so we have our final group of invertebrates which are the insects uh, example grasshopper insects uh, have a complete digestive system which means they have a mouth and anus and they show extracellular digestion uh, there are three main parts of the digestive system the first part is the foregut which has the mouth and the crop food is going to enter through the mouth and is going to be stored or kept in the crop for a short time so the function of the foregut is to break down the, the food into small pieces and to store it for a short time after that the food will move to the mid gut or the middle of the gut okay and here we have different structures very advanced structures like the gastric cica the malpigian tubules and also the stomach and the function of the mid gut is to absorb nutrients and also to digest the food okay digest the food and absorb nutrients and we have the gastric seeker and the malpigian tubules these structures will increase the surface area so that we can absorb more nutrients into the cells after the mid gut we have the hind gut where we have intestines the food will enter the intestines and we have more enzymes uh, released to digest the food and absorb some more nutrients and extra water okay extra water into the cells finally the food will move out or the waste will move out through the anus so so far we've learned about the different digestive system in different organisms starting from protist to insect and we can see that what the digestive system has evolved become more and more advanced uh, with time thank you very much for watching and i hope this is helpful